You're such an asshole. All right, Cappy's in a great mood because it's nice and warm outside. I even saw two butterflies flirting. I'm like, oh, look at that. They're flirting. That, no joke. This late in the season, flying around. I assume the guy and the girl chasing each other. I don't know. I, what I thought here is it's kind of dark and macabre. But I was like, oh, look at that. You know, it's fall. They're flirting. They're going to get some crazy hot butterfly sex or however butterflies get it on. But it was it was beautiful. I was like, oh, look at that. And then I'm like, oh, that's too sad. They're going to die pretty soon. Because I'm surprised they were alive because we've had a couple days where it was below freezing at night. And I'm like, well, that's nice. That's nice. They're still going on. And then I had this dirt. Not not because they were going to inevitably it all dies. So I was like, Did the like, is he harassing her? Do the female butterflies eat the male butterflies? <laughs> Is he bothering her in her last dwindling days of being a butterfly? <laughs> oh, and we have something not too off topic with that, but um, <clears throat> I'm going to apologize in advance because we're taking um, large philosophical universals. I'm going to try and get them down to very laser-like points. So I took some notes. I apologize if I'm <clears throat> meandering a bit. Hi, Aaron. Please keep me anonymous as I have a little personal... Uh, story and don't want myself and my family identified. I'll, I'll change some some things. I get really sick in, of hearing the phrase "happy wife, half happy life" from women, but even more so from men. This phrase is the ultimate signal that the husband in the marriage is miserable, and signals the marriage is, marriage will almost end in divorce. Um, that or it'll just be like most marriages. I think we'll have to do the math again. But like 66, 70 percent of marriages where it's just the husband and wife are miserable and they're really not that into each other. That's marriage. They've been married for 50 years. Yeah. Three of which might've been happy. I don't mean to be so pessimistic. That's just what the numbers are. The book of numbers. Look it up and have your expectations destroyed. Uh, <clears throat> I also have a personal hatred of this phrase as I've witnessed the havoc it wreaks on my own parents as I can remember being sentient. Today, my dad still says the phrase out of fear of the inevitable divorce that is on the way, and I can see it makes him miserable. He has significantly upped his drinking since I moved out of the house. He has told me his fears financial. he fears financial ruin as he is nearing retirement, and I constantly see and hear the BS in the marriage anytime I'm around. I, I Look, um, it is your parents' relationship, but uh, it is, I think, every child's responsibility to have one parent is treating the other poorly particularly the women like you get in their face like you're just stop treating that man like crap uh i don't think by that age your mom or anyone is gonna listen to you and I constantly see in here uh, uh while my dad is partially at fault for embracing the mentality of this phrase my mom is also not innocent either <clears throat> my dad makes a lot of money uh, outside of investments, does most of the work in and outside the house and is still a father raising my younger brother. My mom it works as a teacher, making a mere fraction of what he does and does nothing but sit on her laptop buying stupid crap on Amazon with my dad's credit card. Well, while grading papers was constantly bitching at and belittling my dad. A teacher? An old spinster age woman teach A boomer teacher? Female? Whining and complaining about society? No. Pretty much. Well, your dad should have said shut up a long time ago. Long time ago. I I, I always get a kick. I expect the normies, conformies, and inferiors to be shocked. Shocked that you're charging your girlfriend rent. But I didn't expect it from the, well, I guess the trad uh, cons. It's going to say something else. The trad cons, I guess, oh, my God, you're charging your girlfriend rent. Oh. Bitch, you all been shoving it in my eyeballs that you're all equal. <clears throat> On top of it, Cappy was Poe. <laughs> you're not, I don't care. We're equals now. <laughs> you want to find a guy where you could trade hoo-ha for free rent? There's plenty of guys out there. I ain't one of them. I'm actually going to treat you women as equals. In part because I can't afford it. Um, but yeah, your dad should have nipped that in the bud. And all you guys got to nip that in the bud. And we'll get to the reasons why you don't later. Um, 
My mom is also a boomer feminist and believes in the wage gap, despite the fact she is the perfect example why women earn less than men in the make work field. Was my dad uh, works hard at a place. She and her family are all extreme man haters and hilariously all of her female family has either been divorced or never married. Gee, I wonder why that is. My mom is a good mother. No, she's not. No, that, that she's she is a, a, a bad person. This has nothing to do with the stereotypes associated with the behaviors of, you know, happy wife, happy life. She's nagging your dad and is a financial par parasite and spending the money and all that. She is a hypocrite. Um, <clears throat> and it's in part your dad's fault, in part society's fault. Again, we'll get to it later. But your mom should have the consciousness or self-cognizance to know that she is just pissing away money and she is a parasite. Uh, but I think deep down inside, she knows she is a parasite and, and teachers are just vile people to begin with anyway. Not the fact that your teacher makes you vile, but that, that pool, like, yeah, maybe there was like a good moral Nazi, you know, like kind of forced into, like, I don't really believe in this, but they're going to kill me otherwise. But most Nazis are pretty much scumbags. I mean, most communists are scumbags. <clears throat> and I, I love, I love her to death, but seeing this, my entire childhood and adult life really makes me just want to avoid women altogether, especially the dumpster, dumpster fire of women I have to pick from today and my interactions with them. Look, why don't you tell your mom to stop pissing away the money and treat dad better? Uh, virtually every girl I've talked to about this thinks the happy wife, happy life phrase is real and that they are entitled to it. Effing madness. Can you do a video explaining why this mentality is bad for both the woman and the man in the marriage and how it destroys the lives of both as well as Assess whether or not my increased lean towards ditching Western women altogether is a logical conclusion. Well, you, look, you can't. No. Look, go in here. Yeah, I, I've made the case. We, we are fully aware of the drawbacks of a statistical unlikelihood of you finding quality women in the West. That doesn't mean there aren't quality women. And let's be honest, there's not quality men either in the West. Bunch of soy boys, pussies, raised by pussies like your dad. Thankfully, you avoided that somehow. All right? You don't like, oh, you're that type of people. You're in those borders. You got that skin color. You got that uh, belief or whatever. You got to judge the individual by the individual. It's rare. It's exceptionally rare, but they're, they, it can happen. But if you want to talk about a strategic, like, nah, I'm going to set my dating profile outside the the west okay that that's fine but if you're in the store and this cute girl talks to you for whatever reason and it don't don't deny opportunities here <clears throat> um but getting to your more deeper philosophical question hang on let me pull it back up can you do a video explaining why this mentality is bad for both man and woman and <clears throat> and the man in the marriage and how it destroys the lives of and assess whether or not my increase says it okay so let's go through what's happening and why this happens and how it, it ruins it. Um, just let me get my, my overall arcing mentality straight here. What we're really talking about is the difference between happiness and contentment. And where the misery, the, if, if we look at the happy wife, happy life <clears throat> scenario, the man is trying to make the wife happy. Ironically, contradictorily, even the wife is not happy. And, and when we say that, what comes to mind is a miserable wife and a husband that is just at his wit's end trying to make her happy. And the reason that scenario pops up or that manifests in reality where you have a miserable, pissed off, angry wife. And the husband, especially at this late stage, grasping for straws is because what you're trying to do is achieve the impossible. All right. And this is where it's very important to come understand the difference between happiness and contentment. Happiness, as many people before me have said, in a permanent state is not possible. Contentment is, we'll get to that later, <clears throat> but happiness is not. Usually you're happy because something positive has happened in your life. It increased your expectations of the short, medium, or even long-term. Like if you won the lottery, your long-term expectations of what you're going to expect out of life has changed. And so you're really happy. Or if you find a $5 bill on the ground, like, hey, you got a $5 bill. Yeah. You know, you're not, you're happy for the next hour, maybe max. But after the uh, neurochemical dump, the oxytocin dump, whatever it is, it, it goes away and you go back to 
your base state, your base line of contentment or maybe not even not contentment. All right. So in order to be perpetually happy, it's an impossible thing. You need a constant new fix. Now, where people, there's a couple reasons why as a group of people, especially in the West, we have this expectations of my goal is to be happy. First, you experience, everything is new and novel as a kid. So you're in this perfect environment where new stuff is always happening. So you have this new baseline that is not contentment, but constantly new and exciting things. Oh, wow. Two butterflies. See, a, a child would be happy with one butterfly if you saw the first butterfly. You have to be old and see something new and novel to derive a little bit of happiness from it where there's two butterflies. We've, I have an adult. I don't want to make I mean, I have two butterflies make me a little happy. But, oh, this late in this. Oh, man. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of. Oh, wait. She's going to eat them later. He's sexually harassing the female butterfly. Oh, that poor guy. <clears throat> oh, well, they're going to die anyway. But it's still you get. That's a novel thing to see. I, you have to be an adult to say that's a little late in this season for butterflies to be frolicking. Whereas a little child would be happy to see a butterfly. Your first day at school, your first summer vacation, you got all these new video games, this, that, your grandpa, new presents, all that other stuff. It's on a perpetual increase uh, of like new and novel things. Um, and then at least in the United States, it's, to a large extent, the West, we condition everybody in part because of materialism and companies want to sell you the newest, the greatest things. We want to keep that adrenaline hit going, not adrenaline, that um, endorphin hit going. The college experience is the perfect example of that new experience. No, it's not. It's not new. It's high school with just even more hate filled teachers and you're paying three hundred dollars a credit. But it's the college experience. And then there's the wedding. And especially if you look at it, and it, and it forms in different ways. For men, ooh, sports car, girls, <clears throat> hot tub, lifestyle, bowler, bro, goodness. And now you start to see where there are individual experiences you would experience as a child being replaced with lifestyle, status, kind of switch it from very tangible things like, oh, here's a here's your first chocolate shake, kid, to, ooh, you want to be a baller, bro, right? You want to have experience. You want to be on a yacht, bro. <clears throat> the financial cost of which, even if you finance it, are rather high and steep. And women are sold the same thing. Uh, they're sold, oh, you need an MBA. You need, you know, sex in the city. Um, and then $3,000 handbags and $2,000 pair of shoes. And then you'll be happy. Then the new, now you got to work at it. <clears throat> and so never, ever once, you know, the novel experiences as a child, there becomes an end or a, a tapering off. Because, yeah, I, I've seen television. I've played video games. I've, you know, I've been to the movies. I rode my bike, that kind of thing. And so the experiences and what they sell you go from things to status, lifestyles. <clears throat> and if you sign up for that, usually on the dotted line for a tremendous mortgage or student loans or a car payment, you're locked in and you're always on that treadmill, always on that hamster treadmill trying to achieve the newest, greatest, and latest things. <clears throat> and corporations and banks and the government love it. They love it because they make a lot of money. But there's never a point in time where they say, hey, Maybe you shouldn't be happy all the time. Maybe happiness isn't a permanent state of mind. And especially it's not achievable through things and stuff. But by the time you come out of college, which is only like the real first time you're an adult, you got two decades. Your brain is pretty much done developing. That's pretty much hardwired into you. This pursuit of happiness, even written, what is the Declaration of Independence? But nowhere do we start saying, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is this constant pursuit of happiness even feasible? Doesn't it require constantly new things? I've talked about this, how novelty basically makes happiness not possible. The, everything has a shelf life of novelty, and it will end. Even the hottest, again, put Ava Mendez in front of my house with a sexy little lingerie outfit on. I'll be sick of that bitch if she's in my house for more than four days. 
still get the F out of here. <laughs> but ain't no one going to tell you that, especially in the West, one, because most people themselves don't know it. And then two, a lot of people, it goes against people, entities, institutions, companies, corporations, schools. It goes against their financial interest to tell you. My God, could you could you imagine what would happen to the consumer economy if you started telling women, hey, you should just get married and have kids and love your kids and raise them and stay at home and love your husband and get by on one income? Could you imagine what would happen to the economy? The Democrat Party wouldn't exist anymore. You'd lose one major debt, one major political party. And corporations would lose, oh my God, 60% of their revenues. Not to mention cheaper labor because women are like, well, I'm not working. Why would I? I? My husband takes care of it. All right. So there are huge, compelling, psychological, um, <clears throat> unconscious, st cultural structures that have been structurally, cult culturally, structural things structures that have been in place to not even stop the emergency break hey whoa what are we doing is there a cliff up there why are we going so fast towards it and huge financial incentives to keep people believing in this lie of happiness all right so not just women but men too are, are lied to now <clears throat> you throw in the fact now we have to enter we have to introduce sexual dynamics all right, we're all lying to ourselves and each other about what happiness and the contentment. But you throw in the male sex drive and that men want to get laid. Now there's a whole other lie, <clears throat> a whole other level, layer, thick layer of delusion we, we, we tell women because, it, and Bill Burr said, it's the greatest quote. It's never going to be, this is the greatest quote I've ever heard in my life. It will be until I'm dead. It is probably the greatest quote in the past. It would be a thousand year quote before something. Be Women are surrounded by this tornado of misinformation. And the only, and no one corrects them because we all want to F them. It, it is the brilliant quote. And it's true. <clears throat> And so men will lie to women. Not only will, will society lie to everyone, but men will further the lies uh, uh, and, and <clears throat> not even further, what's the word I'm looking for? They will give these lies a booster shot because they want to get laid. And so women truly are coddled. You have rules and laws now that make it perfectly all right to give women preferential treatment hiring over men. <clears throat> we got to get, I mean, on, on any real serious analysis on like who has it worse or better, if men have it worse, all right? Women don't have to work the real jobs. They get to go to school. They get bailed out. Um, if you look at government spending, they did a study in New Zealand. I know it's not the United States, but women are net economic parasites and men are net economic. Women have life on easy mode. And no doubt, I'm terribly sorry, no different than when you spoil a child and don't let them suffer the full consequences of their mistakes, you get spoiled brats. And the perfect example of spoiled brat is you have the world at your feet. You have the government giving you money and, and, and making it legal to discriminate against men. And you think you're oppressed. <laughs> I, I mean, it, it is, it's delusional. How did we get there? Well, in part because of the structural nature of society, the way we've been psychologically brought up, but men want to get laid. Oh, yeah, I'm the mattress guy. Oh, yeah, I totally down with the call. Oh, yeah, you're totally oppressed. Uh, peace leave now? Touch peen? Bob's in vagine now? And, you know, how many times when women complain about men, keep in mind they're complaining about usually the top 20% of men who are not interested in marriage and all men are scum and all my you know, men are bad and they lie and I'm sick of the games. And uh, like, oh, men, men are pressing. <laughs> Meanwhile, the regular rank of hell just like, I didn't do a damn thing to you. <clears throat> what? And the, the, the expectation women are like, well, we had sex. So now we're married. Right. We're committed. But no. Oh, well, now I have every logical right to accuse him of things he didn't do. And hate him. Discriminate against him. And so everyone's kind of in a delusional expectation, a uh, state of expectations when it comes to happiness, but women in particular. 
And so when it comes to, let's say, you know, that that's in general, that's before any marriage, but let's say you get married now, you are married and, and men and women have to be both aware of the delusional expectations of happiness. And I, I, here's how, here's how much society is like you girls. I can't even tell you girls that you are, your expectations are truly warped and have no bearing or no anchoring or no consistency with reality. It's just not going to happen. And you need to check yourself and figure out what your husband is truly capable of, let alone what is reality capable of delivering in you. And that's, that's considered sexism. <clears throat> that's considered misogyny. You know, hey, ladies, get your, get your, even if it's in your best interest, hey, ladies, you're expecting how many, how many ways you want to talk about how society lies? I'm going to get a job with a degree in journalism or the liberal arts to save the children. No, you're not. You're going to, you're going to continue to make a fraction. You know, perfect example is your, your, your mom and your dad. Your mom has a joke of a degree, a babysitting degree. That's what education is. Your dad is busting his ass off. She bitches and whines about the, about the wage gap. <clears throat> So that's just normal society. Now let's talk about when people get married. Generally speaking, man, if you're getting married, this goes back to the boomer days, but generally speaking now, especially now, women have been so lied to and coddled in part by society and, and in part by horny men that their expectations <clears throat> are so far, so removed from reality, they're never going to be possible to meet. Also, not once has, well, maybe there's one or two people that have had this thought, never has the idea of contentment as a possible permanent status, mental status, as a goal been introduced to their minds. They are addicted to the fleeting and temporary uh, uh, mental state of happiness, and they're going to insist on it. And so when you get married or you just get in a committed relationship, <clears throat> when you are the guy and because of, of traditional, in this sense, the traditionalism where ha men were responsible for providing food, clothing, and shelter and making the wife happy and meeting her needs. I would also say it was men's job in the past to shield women from harsh realities, war, protecting from, from nature. I mean, there's, men are like this buffer. We're a shield. There's women, physically weaker, got to raise the children, protect the children. And then there's reality, and reality will kill them, and we are what stopped them. <clears throat> We were preventing reality and its full force from uh, uh, from women experiencing that in a traditional sense. And so that carries over genetically, biologically, but it's also re conditioned by society. Except now women's expectations aren't just, well, food, clothing, and shelter. Oh, my God, they went out and uh, <clears throat> protected us from the warring tribe. Uh, now they're expect just blown through the roof with media, politics, school, all that other stuff. And so now it is the man's job to make the woman happy. It, it always has kind of been in that sense. That's why I'm introducing that traditional aspect. But that's an impossible. That is, boy, is it Sif, Sisyphus pushing the rock up the hill? There you go. You're trying to make your wife happy. Happiness to begin with <clears throat> wasn't possible. But now with modern Western culture, and newfangled technology are constantly pushing that expectations of happiness in political and sociological indoctrination and programming. And uh, I, I guess you could argue feminism and all that. Women are demanding happiness. They are demanding something that cannot be achieved. And if you're married, guess, guess, who, guess who the culprit is? The only person in the room is you, is the spouse. And it's kind of weird because then, even though everybody is individually responsible for their own happiness, they're going to look at you. You're Because that's traditionally what happened. You're the only guy in the room, and you're the person they're spending the most time with. You're responsible for my misery. You're responsible for me not being happy. <clears throat> and you could... You can whack all the moles. They're going to pop up more moles. There's always going to be something wrong. Why? Because happiness is a temporary state. You could get the SUV. You could get the thing. You could get the that. You could get the this. You could pay off for student loans. You could indulge her in her joke of a career. That 
pales in comparison to yours. You could get every possible little thing. I remember it got so I, I had a, a guy in prestigious pines away. Um, <clears throat> he was telling me the story of a neighbor of his fancy McMansion suburb. And the painter came in to paint a room that the wife wanted a certain color. And he spent hours picking paint. By the way, if you're spending hours picking paint, put a bullet in your head. It's over. Like if that's if if that's what's going to make you or somebody else happy, it's over. You're never going to be happy right there. These these microscopic, granular, petty things. <clears throat> so they chose a paint. The painter was supposed to come in. Uh, uh, and, and Oh, no, he did come in. He came in and he painted it whatever color it was. Wife wasn't happy. You know, maybe the light hit the room different or something like that. She wanted a different kind of paint. Guy was gone on the business or something. And he says, well, and he looked and he's like, okay, well, pick whatever color paint you want. So they they painted again. So he was on work. He was gone for some reason. He wasn't there to see the painter paint. <clears throat> he comes back, goes into the room. It's like the painter didn't show up. It's the same color. And so it goes to his wife. He says, what the hell? Wasn't the painter supposed to come in yesterday? She says, oh, he did. He's like, well, did he paint the room? She's like, yeah, he did. He's like, what do you mean? It's the same color. She's like, oh, no, he painted it. It's a different color. color. Doesn't it look great? And this guy isn't colorblind. He, he just, it was such a microscopically small color of paint. A difference that the guy didn't recognize the difference of the color of paint. <clears throat> and you, if that, and guess what? The wife still wasn't happy. Then you have to redo the basement. Then you got to get a brand new car. There's always new. They're always going for that new hit. That's all of you, man. That's why you guys want to bang other hot women, although that's more sex drive than anything. But you need the new car. <clears throat> you need the new, I don't know, the new, <laughs> what? I, I can't think of anything material that men go after aside from cars. I guess the new baller shades, bro, you need to get in the new nightclub, I don't know, after a while, I gotta imagine if 40 of you guys throw in the tally, this is dumb, I'm not playing this game anymore, but not, not women, not wives, oh, and then the advertising and Oprah, is your husband doing this? He's not. Well, they... <clears throat> and so now you're in hell. You're in hell. Because of all society, and including the courtship of men that have told it, they have brought women's expectations so far removed from reality and also in a philosophically impossible thing of achieving happiness instead of contentment. And so you can't make your wives happy. You can only make her temporarily happy until she's bored with it and is not looking for the next fit fix. Here's another thing, you know, factor in. A husband is not the woman's, you know, soul, not the sole determining factor of a woman's happiness. Same thing with you guys. Your wife is not. There's other things that could be going on. I mean, <clears throat> I guess another thing would be think about this. You guys kind of saw it when Trump was in office and the media constantly reminding women about what an oppressive misogynistic jerk he was. How women are just, they got it so bad in this country. Um, you know, the media obviously leaning to the left. Oh, you know, I mean, what, look at like, um, to give you, con you know, She-Hulk. If, you know, I'm oppressed by men every day. It's like, no, I guess in some microscopic sense, yes. But so a guy asked you out. <laughs> Man's, you know, the guys, remember when they were complaining because men spread their legs? Because, I don't know, they got a unit in there on the on the subway. That's a crisis. That's a problem now. Mansplaining. Uh, it, and, and let's say you swallow that. Let's say you believe that. Oh, my. Yeah, there's other exterior factors that are making women miserable. I, I guess you girls would be miserable, too. Like, did you sign up for a stupid degree and get a master's in? Now you have a ton of student loans. That wears on them. Uh, you know, uh, you could you could say the same thing within the black community. They are constantly propagandized about how oppressed they are and how everything is against them. And, oh, it's the white man. It's like, yeah, if you believe that, that would be a miserable life. You know, we talk about that one guy at the Seattle City Councilman who who was like shocked that they were spraying off feces uh, 
in the Seattle streets or sidewalks, rather human feces, not dogs, humans. Uh, and that that would trigger memories within the black community of um, uh, fire hoses blasting them during the the uh, racial protests in the 60s. Like if if that's your level of sensitivity and where you're like, yeah, you're not it's not possible for you to be happy at all at all. <clears throat> And so with all the negativity around the world and your oh, victimhood narrative and, and women being the, the uh, obviously between the two sexes being a victim there uh, and their finances and you're not doing good enough. Oh, God, I can only imagine what natural female competition is. Oh, Tina, I see you have the 2021 Audi convertible. Oh, I just got. The 2022 Audi convertible, which with extra special Quanta sauce on it. I don't know what women fight over. Oh, I see you have last year's cold shoulder. You guys remember cold shoulder? Look at it. <laughs> All these stupid fans. Oh, I see you have last year. Like it doesn't end. Middle school doesn't end for these people. And so you have a human mind that is just pickled in misery. And one man, married or not, is not going to make him happy or her happy. <clears throat> and that's why happy wife, happy life is a lie. On, on many reasons, happiness is not possible. The environment conditions people to attempt to be happy, which is not possible. Society, as it pertains to the relation with women, we lie to them all the time, both in nature, like, hey, you know, your dad, your grandfather came back. He didn't talk about the war. Why? Because he wanted to spare his wife the details of someone's guts being blown out in front of him. You know, it, it, that, so that's that's base level. And then, you know, men majoring in STEM while you girls majoring in joke bunny studies. Guy makes all the money, girl piss it away. I, how many ways do we shield you from reality? Right. <clears throat> now, to kind of solve that, because it, where, where it should work is whereas happiness is not possible, contentment is possible. Where you are content. And then if good things happen, oh, that's like a little extra sprinkles. Or the, the butterflies flirting out in my yard. <clears throat> or a cherry on the, oh, I got two cherries on the Sunday. They didn't see they put the extra cherry on. Winning. Actually, the small victories do kind of make me really happy. Like, hey, look. I got an, I, I, I don't know. I, I got an extra cigar in the box. Who knew? Oh, free cigar for Cappy Day. Ah, look at that. I'd make you happy about that. <clears throat> All right. But what we really ought to be aiming for is contentment. Because contentment is, it, it, I define it as being congruent with it, reality. Someone also, not me, not me. So it said misery is the difference between reality and expectations. And I think you're in order to be content, you you really have you have to be a stoic. By the way, get the Way of Monkey book by Turd Flinging Monkey. Great book if you're ever having anger and frustrations with how the real world isn't working the way you want it to. <clears throat> Go get the Way of Monkey book. Find it on Amazon.com. But you have to accept how the real world is. And we've all been lied to about that to a certain extent, especially by our parents and teachers. Follow your heart and your money will follow. You're gonna change the world. Be, 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 be. And I had to get, everyone is lied to. I had to get congruent with reality on several ways. One, girls don't like short, skinny guys. They want tall, muscular guys, and they don't want you to be nice and caring and kind. I thought, oh, I'll just be a nice guy. I'll be funny and witty. I'll be classy. Nope. <clears throat> I need to like alpha up in a different way or capacity. They didn't rely on height. And I managed it. My finance degree was worthless. Complete joke. Didn't matter how good I was, didn't matter how good I was at predicting the economy and the markets, how good I was at assessing risk and analyzing and a num numerical analysis, didn't matter. The real world, the real fact was that most of the finance world and banking and all that is headed up by corrupt, thieving boomers. That's what it was now. It's the thieving Gen Xers. <clears throat> um, I'm trying to think what else. Um I, I, another one that you just, although this are kind of intuitive, but guys, girls just don't like you that much. There's not this, there's not this happy, glorious day where it's like the scene with, um, even though we weren't married or dating in it with, uh, Paul Newman and the female actress, uh, in, 
Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, where they're playing rain, drops keep falling on my head, and he's pedaling around on the bike. He's giving her a bump. Not a sexual thing. You ride on the bike. Like, oh, why is that what I'm going to get? Oh, I mean, I should swell. It'd be like those butterflies flying around. No, women don't like guys that much. <clears throat> and I think a lot of problems that you guys have coming to me and women have with marriage and the relationships is your expectations are not congruent and not in line with reality. I, I, you know, ladies, I mean, boy, talk about delusion. You're actually lied to and told that men should like fat chicks and there's something wrong with them what they don't. You, you can bang your head against that wall all day. <laughs> and you guys are told that women like just sweet, kind, caring, sensitive men. No, no. Now you can, you can howl at the moon and get pissed that you were lied to, but there's no reason to howl at the moon. The moon is there. The moon is the moon. And you either get congruent with reality. And how many times have I told this in my advice before? You need to align your expectations with reality when it comes to women or dating or your career, et cetera, et cetera, just reality in general. Because once you do, then you're not going to waste your time, finances, and energies trying to change reality into something that's not going to happen. And you may not like reality, but at least now you're not wasting your time anymore and you're not frustrated anymore. <clears throat> that's why I wrote that essay, Sanity is the Future of Wealth. Look at all the leftists. You want you want revenge on the left? Look at their expectations. Generally, modernly, not all, of course, they are expecting to be celebrated, lauded, and applauded because of traits they were born with. That's the most modern, avant-garde <clears throat> leftist thought. I'm female. I'm a minority. I am not straight. And I'm amazing and great. It's like, no, no, you're not. No, I mean, you're not bad. It just is what is. You know, I got brown eyes and I'm five nine. You're black and you're female. You like licking that genitalia. That person doesn't like licking that genitalia. You have a mental disorder, legit or not. These are things you were born with or things that that simply are. You've done nothing. There's no value there. You've done nothing human. When you do something human, then then there will be value. Whether that's a career or being a good mom, a good dad or an athlete, something. Uh, but the delusional expectation that they told people, you're amazing and the number one value of you are traits you did nothing to earn. <clears throat> your parents fornicated. Your mom didn't abort you. Out you came. You're amazing. No, you're quite average. You're quite boring. There's nothing great about you the way you were born. Quite literally what Martin Luther King said, your content of character, not the color of your skin. And here you are like, oh, my God. I mean, just go on any social media where unemployed people hang out, like Twitter or Instagram. I am going to, with this group of people, the thing I belong to because the way I was born. Like, okay, you know, fine. Have whatever. Latino pride. You got your Cinco de Mayo, which I am aware is only a Mexican holiday. I got that. But inevitably, like, you should do something else. No, they're not. It's amazing. You're am and, and you see this very commonly among women. Women are celebrated because of the way they were born. <laughs> and you're half the population. You're not special. You're really not. And when you celebrate things you were born with, and instead of actually being a human and going out and living and doing something, holy cow, are you miserable. There is nothing, <clears throat> nothing great to be said about you. Oh. <sighs> And so it's uh, it's this th th that delusion to think that you have achievement or value in the way you were born is one of the most inconsistent incongruencies between expectations and reality. Money fall from heaven because I'm born this way? And sometimes it actually does through government spending. But people say, no, we're not going to give you money because of the way you were born. <gasps> Anger. Frustration. <clears throat> and then I don't know how the hell do you wake up day to day being a fat, disgusting South thinking big is beautiful. <laughs> and ooh, you're a Democrat advocating stealing other people's money. Ooh, wow. What an intellectual rewarding life. And so until people get their expectations in line with reality on whatever capacity, whether it's how you derive your value, where you find love, you're, you're not going to be content. 
contentment is impossible. You'll always be at anger and at edge and in unease. <clears throat> You'll always be howling at the moon in one way or another. And so for guys, as it pertains, in general, this is a great philosophy for everyone to get with. Have your expectations in line with reality. Aim for contentment, and contentment is having your expectations be congruent with reality. I can't major in dumb crap. I got to major in engineering. I got to spend less money than I make. I can't be a fat, disgust, a disgusting, loudmouth, feminist pig if I want to get married. <clears throat> but as it pertains to the sexes, ladies, no, oh, Aaron, you got to bang your head against the wall. Here we go. Abandon materialism, abandon status, and why don't you? I, I would say the founding thing for any relationship would be sexual attraction. So please be physically attractive. That's the number one thing. I know you don't like the fact that men find you. It's the number one thing we want is physical youth and beauty. Perfect opportunity for you to either get congruent with reality or continue your delusional expectations. All right. <clears throat> be physically attractive. Be nice. Here's the real hard part. Stop putting your pursuit of happiness, which is impossible, uh, at the at the center for your contentment. And instead, why don't you focus on your husband and any kids you have? Why don't you focus on love? The requirement of which is sacrifice. But you're sacrificing anyway, I, whether that's to a career and a corporate employer or student loan debt or to people who actually love you. All right. That that would be the advice I'd give to the women and to men <clears throat> never, never shield women from reality. That is over. And I don't say that because women are screaming and asking for uh, for equality, which is also true. That's a, that's a logical reason. That's that's reason enough to do it. But if you keep shielding women from reality, either out of, uh, you know, Milady, I shall save the, you know, white knighting or because you want to be an ally. Because if you keep shielding women from reality, they're not going to have expectations that are congruent with reality. They will be delusional. They will never be happy. And then any one of you that gets in a permanent relationship with them, whether that's a marriage or long term or whatever, they're going to expect you to be in charge and make them happy, which is once again, not a possible thing. And it takes a lot. This is where there's always training. And, and ladies, sometimes men are delusional as well. I mean, it, it's possible that both people are delusional. <clears throat> but guys, you never, you don't try to make the woman happy. You try to make her content. And the first step is you and I, The one of the founding principles to uh, uh, foundational principles to any relationship I, you know, I, I have with a woman, you're talking to the guy who's a candidate, is we're living in reality. You're going to have your debts paid off. You're not going to major in stupid crap. No, you, you're not going to be taking Ritalin or Adderall. No, you're not mentally ill. No, you're not going to be fat. No, I'm not going to take care of you. You're going to work and pay your taxes and support yourself. No, I'm not. <clears throat> no, I mean, we can date, but I'm not marrying a girl or committing to a girl that has another man's kids and student loan debt with her sociology degree. And if you would like to be part of a, a relationship where you and I are here, I am number one in your life and you are number one in my life. And we are not aiming for materialism or status or prestige or careers. We are aiming for each other. And if we have children, by God, someone's going to stay home and raise them. Maybe the woman, maybe the guy, but we're going to be agreeing on this, that love is more important than things. And I'd even say before you get to love, which I think is a, it's a whole other idealistic poppycock, <clears throat> is finances. I know it's boring, guys. I know it's so boring, but you need your financial act together. You know, like you need your health, you need your finances together. But that is a huge thing with women and men too. No, we're not getting a car, all these idiots getting car loans. We're not getting a car loan. We're going to drive pieces of crap. They're good, reliable cars. No, you're not spending more than you make. 
We pay off our credit card bills every month in full. No, you're not leaving the kids to go get your master's degree in theolo theological studies. <laughs> no, you're, you're going to raise the damn kids. And then when they're out of, you know, when they go to school, or so, then you could go back to school. And no, I am not the sole. I'm sorry, girls. You keep voting in the taxes for this. You, you love those Democrat taxes. No, I am not the sole. It's possible, but not until you pay off your debts and you contribute a lot of money to the child raising fund. No, I'm not the sole person as sole provider. If we don't have kids, you're working. And you're working a real job, not some like patty cake job. Oh, we're going to cohabitate. I don't care if I make three times the amount of money that you, you're paying half the rent and half the utilities. You cannot shield them from reality. They need to, they need to experience and live and survive in reality so that their expectations are in expect are in line with reality <clears throat> and they have no delusional expectations and therefore they are content. They also have investment and equity in it where they put in the work like, okay, yeah, I got to support myself. Okay. I also like the idea of individualism, <clears throat> which has been my guiding principle. It's like, no, the GF, you have your car. You have your finances. You have your retirement funds. I'm not responsible for your retirement. You're not responsible for mine. We agree through volunteerism to hang out with each other. But I am not bailing you out. And you are not bailing me out. And having women live in the real world, especially as it pertains to a relationship between you and your wife, is the quickest way to get them content because they are forced to deal with reality. And then they have no delusion about, but, Bipsy got the brand new Audi. Bipsy and her husband are debt ridden. I was at the bank working and I saw their application. They are living paycheck to paycheck. I don't care if they got the nice house on the nice lake with the Audi. <clears throat> I don't know who the hell financed them for that Audi, matter of fact. You'd have a girl like, look at that sucker buying that brand new car. That's the girl you want. You're like, yeah, I just contributed to my IRA. That's the girl you want. Copy, those girls don't exist. <gasps> you don't say, really? Expectations in line with reality. That's why I have the menu, Life Without the Opposite Sex. Because the percentage of people, men and women, that got their financial life together is so little. So there you go. I mean, it's too late for your parents, good sir. So, I mean, let's go back to your question. Can you explain why this mentality is bad for both the man and the woman in the marriage? Yes, they're both living in a delusional expectation. They're pursuing happiness, not contentment. And your dad spoiled your mom. Your dad didn't say no. Look, guys, a lot of this is just avoided if you don't get married. Like, no, I'm not getting married. We could be committed to each other. But if it's a common law state, you have your own place. You just don't get in that situation. You don't get married. And then that way, but I want children. No, I have a vasectomy. Whoa, whoa. <clears throat> you like to live together. Wait a minute. Don't you vote Democrat all the time? You do. And in this state, if we live together, you get half my stuff. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. But you guys are so addicted to the hoo-ha, you'll throw your life away. So it's all academic, isn't it? No. So, um, what's it? Uh, uh, <clears throat> how it destroys the lives of both. It does. They're both miserable, aren't they? Your mom has lived her entire life chasing something that's not possible, and your dad has tried to support her in that pursuit. I that just poof, over for me, man. Over. Uh, <clears throat> how to stress low assess whether or not my increased chance of that. So I uh, increased leaning towards ditching Western women altogether. It it 
any materialistic socialist society, especially where the government has replaced men's obligation to support women, yes. You should have a, a, an increased wariness of that. Don't rule out anyone. You could find a nice, wonderful, beautiful woman in the West. It's absolutely possible. Again, the individual. <clears throat> you know what? Oh, most of the uh, most uh, black people vote Democrat. What? You're not going to have good. What? There's no good black people. You don't have a good, cool black friend. You've never met a black Republican, black libertarian, or just hell, black dude who's sick and tired of the politics. Like I ain't voting for the damn. He doesn't carry a card. You know, card carrying Republican. <clears throat> you have to judge the individual. So I think if the right girl comes along, make sure he pays. <laughs> Make sure she pays her own rent. Look, I'm laughing at that because it's still appalling to most people. Make sure she has her own place. Make sure she's got her own finances. Make sure she pays off her debts. Make sure she, oh, you'd like to be in a committed relationship, but I see you claim to have the hid to hid this and you party and you drink all the time. Nah, when you, eh, we can have sex, but until you actually prove you're strong into a true, there which she is by definition a truly strong independent woman and doesn't need you and chooses to hang out with you nonetheless let's talk but i'm i'm sorry it's like that's your place this is my place i have sperm in the sperm bank if you would like it otherwise i have a vasectomy oh oh you would like my seed well wow, that's very nice let's negotiate <clears throat> how much guarantees and money are you going to give me to have children or well, you'd like to form a family with, oh, hang on now, wait a minute. Are you living in reality? Are you still believing Oprah and the Democrat Party that you're just so oppressed and happiness is a mirror? You get a car and you get a car. I mean, how sad was that? You get a car and you get a car. And you know, the girl's like, ah, free stuff. I guarantee you those women, how happy were they? Maybe a couple months and then back to being miserable because Oprah said so. <clears throat> so there you go. All right. So link below. What is link below? I think the menu, Life Without the Opposite Sex, and the Book of Numbers. This one is the Better Bachelor Edition with an intro by Joker. Um, get it. Ladies, I, you know, minority audience, but please read these books so you know. I mean, I, I want to get married and be happy. Well, you're not going to be happy. Do you want to be content? And do you want to have love? That's all I can offer you girls. <laughs> it's like, do you want happiness and do you want contentment and love? Or do you want misery and materialism and overeducation and a career <clears throat> that is soul sucking? And you're all going to go with it, but uh, never mind. I'm going to stop it. Uh, so the links are down below. You can get that. If you guys are having trouble with your finances, which is a pre, you know, it's, it's like, don't be fat. Oh, I'd like to meet the girls. Well, you fat guys. Oh, but how do I get the girls? Well, you don't. You need to get in shape. That's a, a finance. Finances are the same prerequisite. If you want to have a relationship, you need to be in physical beauty. You need to physically attract someone. And I would also argue that you need to get your financial act together. And so I have a, a course open on teachable, uh, achieving financial excellence. Just search it. Aaron Clary teachable, achieving financial excellence. That's open for enrollment. <clears throat> Next week, we'll be opening up the minimalism course, which teaches you, uh, basically beats it into you on how to spend less than you make. But that one is is more stingy. And then uh, 505 people. Wow. Please, all of you sign up. Can you subscribe to the channel? <clears throat> Can you subscribe to the channel so that I get to 100,000 so I get my plastic trinket so I could show my dad, Dad, look, plastic trinket, 100,000. Then you won't know what it that really is. That's the only goal I have. Like, look, dad, plastic trinket. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Lots of comments. Got a couple super chats in here. I'll have to scroll up. I'm going to go look for egg. It's going to go fossil hunting and look for egg. It's later today. That's what I'm going to do, boys and girls. You know why? Because I can. Yeah, it looks like real femme sapiens in here. Like She's she's going to she's gonna have a happier life. Why? Because she knew, she knew to say, hey, I ought to put my husband first in my life and put my family, which she, I guess she's going to have kids one of these days. Oh, my God. Someone who put her family first. Holy cow. Sit down, everybody. You see how absurd it is when you say it that way? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You want your career 
and things more than love and children? I'll be on with Chad later on tonight, me and Vlad Elkums. 5 p.m. Mountain Time, you guys do it. Oh, there's Alex Pacino. Where have you been? Where's Alex Pacino, our truck driving lead? Where has he been? I'm glad you're not dead. We're glad you didn't take the Fred pill. Alex Patino, our truck driving Latino, agent in the field, five bucks. My mom told me that happy wife, happy life is BS. If the wife don't want to be happy, that day is not going to happen. There you go. I'm just simply trying to get women. It, it, women have their own responsibility to be happy. You girls are, if your happiness is contingent on a guy marrying you and then providing that Disneyland fairy tale, but you're a fat sow and deep down inside, you know, you're going to love bonbons more than honey. You don't want to raise your kid. Look, you're not going to be, I'll tell you this girls, you will not be happy putting things and status in your career ahead of children or people. There you go. There it is. Ask Alex's wife to get the picture. Oh my God, he has a wife and she's with the children and the kids are happy. And here's it. Now sit down, everybody. I, this is impossible for you to understand. Did you know Alex and his wife are together? Like a nuclear family? Imagine that. Huh? Ron Chandler, two bucks. Thank you. He has nothing. has nothing there. <clears throat> uh, boom. Brian Dupree, two bucks, was happier living in my truck than married in a condo. Yep. Man, what is the biblical saying? A man is happier living <clears throat> un unannoyed by a nagging wife in the corner of a roof than in the house or something like that. Wow. Man, the algorithms come in. Boop, 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 scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Alex Patino, truck driving Latino agent in the field again. Five bucks. I drive nights, so it's hard to catch you live. By the way, guys, <clears throat> only tolerate five minutes of the spouse rant. If there's no solution offered, then the conversation is over. Ooh, good rule. Five minutes? You got patience, man. <laughs> My girlfriend. We don't really, not even really arguments, but projects have to get done. Hold it. What's your solution? Oh, yeah. Tickety talk, tickety talk. We're dying, man. I am the least patient man. And patience is not a virtue. It is a weakness. Get to the freaking point. I got fun stuff to do. Taiwando, two euros. Men, the shield that guards the realms of the realms of humanity. It is. We are. I'm and I'm sure we're okay with that. That's fine. Just don't don't tell us that we got to have our cake and eat it too. And we got to pay taxes and provide for our family and that we're evil and we're oppressing you. No, no, no. We'll let <clears throat> we'll let the barbarians in. I, you can there is nothing nothing better than let reality happen to women right now. You want reality, you want you girls want equality, you want to stand out, you want to be strong and independent, then why'd you get a bailout for the student loans? Why do you constantly demand men pay more in taxes disproportionately speaking? So you get bailed out. Why do you need every form of government money and every wick and this and that and daycare and all this other stuff? I mean, I've never seen such contradiction. Strong, independent, but you vote to enslave other people to work more to pay for your mistakes or your lifestyle. I mean, and we can't do anything about how people vote, but you could certainly in your individual life. Guys, you never bail a woman out of her student loans. Never. She got a car loan? Like, oh, it sucks to be you. Credit card debt? Maybe, well, well, we should get together. Well, when you pay off your student loans, your credit card debt, and you never get in debt again, sure, we can get together, sure. Uh, wholesome DJ aftershock five bucks, but Cappy Tina, the part-time social worker from Edina needs a new Range Rover. So she can go drive to vote for Dean Phillips and Tim Waltz. Again. I know. Look I, again, beating my head against the wall. If you girls want to see how happy you could expect to be getting married, but holding on to leftist parasitic, uh, politics, <clears throat> go look at Minnesota women, go look at them. Go look at how ill-reared, mentally ill their children are. 
And then another Jerry Shoot kids will go burn down some more buildings. It's or you, or you could just raise your kids, love your husband, be thin, be hot. There she is. How you doing, Allie, baby? <clears throat> go subscribe to her after, only after you subscribe to me. Oh man, we got all these prawn sites doing the advertisements. Hey, Allie, when are you going to do the review? Do you want the money or not? This does not have to be war and peace of a review. Just do the review. Tell the truth. I don't want you to lie. Don't. This isn't advertising. I paid for a review, an honest review. Well, I haven't paid yet. You read the thing. You did all the hard work. Don't worry, I banned Bryce. <clears throat> Abdul Wahib, two bucks. Qu question, what is a woman? A woman is a feeling. Boy, <laughs> you ain't wrong, man. Scrolling, scrolling. Uh, uh, uh. Abdul Ahib again. Zero wife or four wives aren't better than one. Are better than one. Zero wife or four wives are better than one. I guess with four wives, <clears throat> God almighty. I don't know how Abu American does it. I know their wives are more traditional and they're Muslim. So I, I guess obviously they're they're quiet. Um yeah, I guess four wives, I guess. But then you get, see, that's the thing. You got to support them. And I'm not Abraham. I do not have tons of flocks of sheep and cattle. I, uh, I'll i stick with one. Four wives. Oh, my God. <laughs> You'd have to be. You have to be in one of those Abrahamic religions old school. Like, you're in that tent. You're in that tent. You're in that tent. And all of you shut the hell up. Care about your problems. JG, five bucks. <clears throat> I built up an Operation Evil businesses. You're good for you, making 100000 profit per year selling dumb stuff to NPCs. I work one hour a day. Thanks for the idea, Captain. Good for you, JG. I'm, gl I'm glad about it. John Grant, right? I think. Um, congratulations. Congratulations. Um, I've not yet been able to. I did a foray into Operation Evil. I've told you guys about my problems trying to market to women. Uh, I tried to, uh, guys, don't even bother trying to have, it, it, this is a hurdle I didn't expect, but um, advertising to women, you need to be in the business. You need to have an in and you need to know. Um, I have reached out to individual gals, especially a female dating strategy. Man, they, they hate men. I'll, I'll tell you that right there. They hate men. I was in an exchange with one of them. <clears throat> very polite, very professional. I'm like, here's a book I think you might like. Da 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 da. Well, why would I read it? Well, because it was a number one best selling within feminist theory. Hmm. Well, you know, why should I? I'm like, look, it, by the time you, if you just read it, if you, instead of questioning me, you, you could have read it and been done with it. Well, if it took five minutes, what well, doesn't sound that good? Like, look, okay, you got, I got it. You just hate men. I'm a guy trying to offer you a thing. You immediately suspect of it. You're not going to do it. Fine. Okay. Um, you know, man, traditional girls are really cool. <laughs> Green Top LLC, five bucks. I had a near-death experience working on the roof today. Don't waste your time, gentlemen. This stuff matters. Yeah. It, you really got your, you got to get your life congruent with reality. You really do. And you got, don't, don't invite unhappy people in your life, male or female, but especially women. And, and the quickest way to tell if a woman is unhappy is, okay, what are your expectations? What do you want out of life? I, and it, I, I hate to be so simple, but the simple thing is like, okay, are you a Democrat? All right, you're, you're, you expect other people, just not you, to take care of yourself. <clears throat> you abdicate ownership and responsibility and agency. All right, that's a very immature approach. Now I got to worry about what other factors, uh, areas of your life that abdication of responsibility affect. Are you going to be happy? I mean, are you going to be miserable because a guy with a funny haircut and a toupee is president and he said some crass things in the past? 
Do you believe the fat black woman who's miserable and never had kids and was never successful or happily married? You're going to believe the billionaire fat black chick that told you what you wanted to hear because she bought people cars? All right. What what do you want? I mean, the quick here, guys, the quickest way to tell if someone is is a materialist and is is just an NPC. Should you stay home and raise your children? Do you believe women should stay? This is men talking to women. Do you believe that you should raise your children? Like, if you want, okay, would, well, how would you raise them? Would you outsource it? And you can't say, well, would you raise your children? Because they're going to say yes, because they think being there like an hour a day at night, you know, is raising the children. But you say, well, oh, you want to have children? I'm like, well, would you, well, how would you take care of them? Would you put them in daycare or school or what? Well, how would you do that? You know, <clears throat> and say, oh, yeah, I drop them off in daycare. There's your answer. You, you are wrong. I don't want to say, say mentally ill because society has conditioned people this way. You're wrong. Not raising your children. You're wrong. And I'd even say evil. Not, not consciously or maliciously evil, but accidentally evil. Like, what the hell is wrong with you? You have children and you're not going to raise them. <clears throat> Understand if you're in the Stefan Molyneux situation where it makes perfect sense for the husband to stay at home. But somebody should stay at home and raise the kids. And if you ask, well, you know, would, would you would you want to stay home and raise the kids? Oh, God, no. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, you know, that person believes in in, in incongruent. Their expectations are incongruent with reality. <clears throat> Off we go. Into the knee. Oh, we got a girl. What's a girl doing here? Uh oh, that's our that's a Detroit engineer agent in the field. <clears throat> Man, Atham's like, where is Atham? He's letting all the girls in here. Oh, I'm not wearing my things. The blue wrench. Velocity of information is Doc's new book. Go get it. If you're interested in that kind of stuff. Am I caught up? Are we all done with the. Uh, I think we're caught up with everything. That's it. <clears throat> there you go. All right. Subscribe, please. Look, I'll stop asking to subscribe when we get to 100,000 because I ain't going to make it to a quarter million. I think that's the that's the next step. You get a, a new plastic thing. I just want one plastic thing. I just want you to. Know, I'm not even aiming for copper or, or bronze. I'm aiming for tin. Not aiming for gold or silver or even, even bronze. I just want copper. I want tin. All right. See you guys later. Toodles.